guys, today I thought I'd do an installation tutorial. So Manjaro Linux has become really popular. It's listed as number one on Linux DistroWatch. So I thought I'd do a tutorial on how to get started using Manjaro Linux, how to install the operating system on either a physical system or if you want to not um, actually overwrite your maybe your Windows or OS X operating system but still want to try a great Linux distribution, I'll show you how to install a virtual machine on your system. It's really easy to do, really fast to get started, and Manjaro Linux is particularly great for beginners and advanced users as well. That makes it why it became so popular pretty quickly. It is based on Arch Linux, which has a history of being both cutting edge and also extremely fast. So using those features, they were able to build this great um, user-friendly interface to get started that is supporting a lot of different hardware. So Manjaro Linux is really a great choice to start out using a great Linux operating system. So give it a chance and just uh, keep watching the tutorial. I'll show you how easy it is to get started using Manjaro Linux. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and go over to manjaro.org. It has all the information you'll need to download the software, how to use it, to the community, how to get involved if you're interested in, you know, doing more exploration into the OS. So you kind of read all what it's about. So we're going to want to go ahead and download it. So let's click on download. And there's going to be a lot of options. Now, it really depends on what desktop environment you're looking for. There are many different options. And that's one of the nice things about the Linux operating system is how um, community can get involved and developers can create different desktop environments, different looks. Um, so there's um, XFCE. There's KDE, he's been around for a long time. GNOME, been around for a long time. You find it in other distributions. And then there's uh, the classic, really no desktop command line, which you find on mostly uh, just server environments. I would pick maybe KDE is pretty popular. It's been around for a long time. But in addition to that, the community has gone out and built out these additional desktops. So the underlying operating system of Corona are the same in all these. All the command, like the command lines the same. The only difference is what the desktop looks like you know, how how interesting, how kind of decked out do you want it, how user-friendly. So if you ever watch those movies with, like, hackers, they always, always have a Linux environment with some crazy desktop. They, and it's usually come to run probably from one of these communities here. So some of these might actually look a little familiar if you've been, you ever watch any movie with any sort of hacker in it. They always have the decked out desktop. So it's kind of cool that you could pick out one of these, whichever one you're, really interested in. I want to choose KDE probably because I've just been doing Linux so long and I've been using KDE forever. So, but pick whichever one you're interested in. The rest of the tutorial will uh, work for any of these um, ISOs you download. So you can download the ISO, which is just a CD image. And we're going to use that to either, you could traditionally burn it on a CD or DVD, yes, but uh, we're going to make a bootable USB device. And the alternative is also, we're going to create a virtual machine on your machine. So I'm going to show you two different ways. So this is the way we're going to download this USB installer. It's a universal USB installer, which will take your USB drive, make it bootable, so you can actually install Linux from it. So if you want to install on a physical laptop, let's say you have an old laptop you're not using, and you want to test out this Linux operating system, this is the way to go. You can download this universal USB installer. And it's a small download. So once you have your ISO downloaded and the USB installer, then you can go ahead and create a bootable USB device. And then we're going to plug this into your old laptop. You know, make sure you, of course, check when you're doing this. Make sure the USB that you're using has no important files on it. You don't want to actually delete anything. So we're going to start up the program. You're going to select the USB that should hopefully have no important files on it. Um, you're going to scroll down to the operating system you want like. Uh, Manjaro is built on Linux, but this actually already has Manjaro listed. So if you chose Arch Linux or Manjaro, either way, it should work. We're going to browse for our ISO image that should be in our downloads folder. Click OK. And then we're going to select our USB device. Now, just be careful you select the correct one. Look at the description. Look at the size. You don't want to accidentally delete anything that's important. So be, just be careful at this step. And once you're all done, go ahead and click Create. This should take a few minutes, essentially copying the whole ISO image onto your USB device and making your device bootable. So this, again, is for installing on a physical laptop. The alternative would be putting it on a virtual machine. 
So by using different software such as Oracle VirtualBox, we will be able to do that. So I'll demo that in a minute. So once you create a USB device and you have it plugged into your old laptop, reboot your laptop and bring up the boot menu. Usually one of the hotkeys, F2, escape, it depends on the laptop. You'll see it kind of splash by on your splash screen as your machine's booting up. It'll tell you how to bring up the boot menu. So you want to bring up the boot menu and select the USB device that you have um, inserted into your laptop. So usually it'll say the name of the USB vendor on there as a boot menu option. So select that and go ahead and start the installation process. Now, if you do not want to install it on your physical computer, but you want to test it out, Oracle VirtualBox is a great product. Go to virtualbox.org. This will allow you to create a operating system inside your host operating system. So if you're running Windows 10, that stays, but inside a window, inside Windows 10, you can run this full Linux environment. So check it out, download it, install it. It's really easy to install. Um, restart your computer, and then we're going to go ahead and create a virtual machine. So once it's installed, you'll have this menu option. We'll click New. You'll select Linux, and it'll have um, Arch Linux listed here. Uh, Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, so this will not be an issue. Select 64-bit. Um, if your laptop that you're using is, is relatively new, 64-bit should work. Then we choose our disk size. So essentially, we're building a computer here. We choose our hard disk size, 8 gigabytes. We choose a virtual disk. I'm selecting all the default options here. Dynamically allocate size. So that means it doesn't allocate the whole 8 gigs at once. It only uses what it needs. So I'm changing it up to 16 gigs, but again, it only allocates what it needs as it goes along. And then we're going to go ahead and start up our new virtual machine. So we still have a full Windows 10 running. This is running all inside Windows 10, so I'm going to select the ISO I downloaded. And now it's going to boot into that ISO. So this is what the Manjaro installation looks like. You can get this uh, menu option here. So I'm just going to scroll down to where it says Boot. Manjaro x86-64 KDE. So that's just a saying Manjaro x86-64 is the instruction set, a 64-bit instruction set, and the KDE is the desktop I selected. Um, no matter which desktop you select, you should get a menu similar to this. So it's going to go ahead and boot into my Linux operating system. You'll see this um, boot welcome screen. So these OK messages here are actually the startup scripts. They're just letting you know the machine's starting up correctly. There's no issues. So it's starting up all the services to run Manjaro Linux. And it's going to bring you up into like kind of a test environment. So this environment allows you to fully use Manjaro Linux without having to actually install it in your virtual machine. So this virtual box created a virtual machine for you inside your Windows 10 operating system without affecting your Windows 10 operating system at all. So it's a really great way of trying many different operating systems. So once it comes up, we should be able to use all the tools as if it has been installed on this virtual machine. So first you'll see this kind of welcome screen. You can get more information, um, just learn more about the product. It shows that my networking has been connected. And again, this is not technically installed yet. This is just boot off the USB image or I'm sorry, the ISO image that we downloaded, it actually hasn't installed on the virtual machine. So if you restart this virtual machine, it will not boot back into this unless you specifically, again, pointed to that ISO we downloaded. So you actually do want to go through the installation process on this virtual machine. So every time you turn on the virtual machine, it has Manjaro installed and boots right into it. Before going ahead and installing it, go ahead and check out this desktop environment. See if you like it. Try one of the other desktops. Download a few different ISOs. See which one you like the best. You notice how much software it comes already installed. All the stuff commonly used by developers or just everyday users. There's browsers installed, word processing, Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, presentation type software. So you see a large array in um, chatting software. So a lot of things that everyday use that's commonly used is already there to be installed and start using. It even has links to uh, Word and Excel by Microsoft um, to the micro online Word and Excel offered by Microsoft Office 365. Now, if you want to install the process, you should go ahead and click on the link on the desktop to install Manjaro Linux. 
we're going to go ahead and select, go through and select the process here of getting the OS actually installed on this virtual machine. Once you click the link, go ahead, it's going to go ahead and ask you a series of configuration questions and how you want it installed. Uh, first, it gives you this nice welcome screen. Then you can choose the kind of location where you are in the world. So go ahead and click on what region in the world you currently locate in, what English language keyboard option. Um, if you want to erase your disk. Now again, this is the virtual disk in your virtual box. This is not your actual Windows or OS X disk. So don't worry here, that's going to erase your hard drive. It's not. If you look at the size up there, it says VBox hard drive, 12 gigabytes. So remember, there is some space loss when I first allocated 16 gig. Now you can configure the user that's going to be using this. Um, I'm going to choose my name. You can name your PC. You give it a password. You can ask to log in with no password. And then you can create a separate administrator account. So you can either give yourself sudo access with this account or set the same password for your administrator account. So once everything's ready, showing your partition, you go ahead and install now. That is a very, very simple installation. It's going to go ahead and partition your virtual disk in Oracle VirtualBox. And your virtual disk is actually just a very large file in your Windows 10 or OS X operating system. And, but to this Linux distribution, to Manjaro, it actually thinks it's an actual hard drive. So Oracle VirtualBox is great because it creates virtual devices, like a virtual network card, virtual storage. So once it's done, it's going to go ahead and restart. And now when it restarts this time, it's no longer going to restart from the ISO. It's going to restart from um, the virtual hard disk in this virtual machine with Manjaro Linux already installed. So again, this is going to be your permanent installation. Any files you create or store in this virtual machine will be saved. So if you want to do any editing or browsing, whatever it might be, any content only exists in this virtual machine on the files, the virtual disk files created by Oracle VirtualBox on your Windows or OS X operating system. So, so it doesn't really overlay. So you can't go from your Windows 10 into your virtual disk to access these files or content. So once you go ahead and go in here, you go ahead and use it and check out all the different software options. Again, there's tons and tons of software already pre-installed. There's a full repository, so if you use the um, software packet management software in here, you go in and check out additional applications or apps that can be installed on Manjaro Linux um, really easily from an online repository. So that's one of the advantages of Manjaro is how um, the Arch Linux developers created this operating system. It's not identical to Arch Linux, it's, but it's made by a similar development team by the same community that developed Arch. Arch is con traditionally considered a very technical server environment. This was designed to be incredibly user-friendly with a lot of software installed, with a nice desktop environment um, for just beginners or even experienced Linux users. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. You guys are awesome, and I'll guys see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Definitely give a Manjar Linux a try. I don't think you'll regret it. And I'll see you guys next time. Give me a thumbs up if the video was helpful. Bye, guys.